So if the CDC is is seeing this stuff firsthand and then they're saying, well, we don't really know what caused it. Is there scientifically not enough to connect the two to say the train derailment happened here? Everyone's having the same symptoms. It's the train derailment. That's what we're hearing at, at this current time from some medical officials. They're saying, if you feel as though you're sick, go see your primary doctor. But due to all of the testing, the water, the air, the soil, there's nothing that is saying definitively that your signs and your symptoms are because of the toxic chemical exposure. It's just kind of funny to me. I remember John Stewart was on TV. He was talking about something completely different that we're not going to bring up at this point. But he said, uh, you know, if there's chocolate on the ground in Hershey, do you think it came from the Hershey factory or do you think it came from somewhere else? And it seems like this is that. It seems like it's, uh, gee, I don't know why I'm feeling these odd symptoms. I, I wonder what could it be? Is it possible that there was a giant train derailment and a chemical burnoff here? Yeah, and, and that's what a lot of people in East Palestine are, are feeling. It could be the, the slightest runny nose the last two months. They're going to believe that it has everything to do with the train derailment. They watch a train go up into smoke in their town, catch fire, and then two days later there was a controlled chemical release that allowed toxins to go into the air, into the soil, into the water, and they they were going to link it right back to it, at least in their minds. Uh, there's nothing that can tell them that it, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, the derailment. Well, so how uh, aside from that, how are the folks in East Palestine feeling now? I know that you had said they're worried that there would they would lose national attention, that they would you know kind of lose the support uh, of the rest of the country that they were getting, and maybe some of that has happened. Do the folks there feel forgotten, or do they feel like with CDC folks going door to door still? Do they feel like at least somebody is still paying attention to them? I believe two months later, they feel as though they are still getting a lot of attention. The, a lot of the local news stations, local journalists are, are remaining on scene. But I've got to tell you, the bipartisan effort here in Ohio between congressmen and women, between senators, has been great. They're keeping it in the spotlight by testifying, by going to their social media platforms. They want to make sure that the town of East Palestine isn't being forgotten about. And I feel as though the residents, they understand that a, a little bit. They knew at some point the the national media attention was going to die down, but they're still getting it, right? You and I are here uh, doing this interview about East Palestine two months later. The people of America, they're not forgetting what's happening in East Palestine because every time that there's another train derailment in this country, the first place you think of is East Palestine. You're exactly right. One in North Dakota, one in Montana, and you're just going, oh, no, is it another East Palestine? And they are in East Palestine, and it's still affecting them. And I wonder if it bothers them that the president has not been there himself or if that is just something that we talk about and it doesn't matter to them whether he's there or not. I believe it almost is just one of those things that we're talking about and other people across America. Uh, the, the people of East Palestine, they don't really um, care for President Biden. They're very, very Republican heavy area. All of Columbiana County is. And it's one of their last concerns. And if he was to have shown up in the very early stages, I don't think he would have been welcomed uh, too easily anyways w with the way of uh, the um, the Columbiana County, the rural area support Donald Trump. Now, that is interesting. So he would. So, so it is just you and I talking about it. Hey, why isn't the president going? Well, he's not really wanted there and it's not going to make a difference if he goes. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah. When I was there, when pres the former president Biden or uh, former President Trump, excuse me, was on ground back in in uh, early March, there were people who who said if Biden came, there would only be four chairs that were lining the streets. And, <laughs> and that was exactly from the mouths of East Palestine residents. And so I'm guessing when the former president was there that uh, there was a few more than four chairs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was almost a stampede. I, I've got to tell you, it was um, it was madness. I waited outside for about two and a half hours for him to make his way down to the fire department. And a lot of people weren't happy that they didn't get the chance to say hi to uh, former President Trump, but they were happy that he was there. I'm surprised myself that President Biden hasn't made the trip, especially after saying on March 2nd that he was going to make a trip sometime soon. And it is now April 3rd. Um, okay, that's Jordan Miller. You can read him at jordanmiller.news.
Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find NewsNation in your cable lineup. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-based, unbiased coverage.